Okay, so some cases in shipping, the cutter block becomes loose to the actual cross slide, which is this little metal piece right here. So there's bolts between this and this from underneath. So to fix that, what we have to do is get a seven millimeter wrench and loosen up these four gib lock screws. So they just have to be broke loose. If you don't have a seven millimeter wrench, you can use a crescent wrench, pliers, whatever fits your fancy. So just, just a half a round or whatever, just to loosen them up. So make sure they're all loose. Then you need a, either a two millimeter or a 564 Allen wrench. And then loosen these screws up. They're actually the Gibbs screws that look like little set screws. Just about a round or so will be enough. And really the fourth one that's the furthest back that way, you really don't need to touch. You can if you like. These are also the same screws you would loosen and adjust if you don't like the tension that's on the cross slide handle here. If there's too much tension here, it's too hard to spin for your liking, just loosen up these three jam nuts and then you can loosen or tighten the gib screws inside with that two millimeter or 564 Allen wrench. You like to have them all about the same pressure though, so whatever you do on one, try to put that same feel on all of them. Now, once you get those all loosened up, you want to take off this bolt right here. It takes a 7 16 wrench or 11 millimeter that connects the, that's the arm that connects the cutter block to the handle. So you want to disconnect that. Once you get a broke loose, you should be able to just spin it out by hand. Okay, now you can see that this arm is now disconnected. So this moves independent of the handle. Once you have that, there's two Phillips screws right here. There and there. You need to take those out. You'll have to rotate the handle to get the flat where you need it to uh, access the screws straight on. That's why that flat's there. Once you have that, the whole cutter assembly will slide out. So now you can see we've got three black Allen screws there. Those are the same size Allen wrench as the Gib set screws, which is 564 or two millimeter. So you'll take your Allen wrench there, make sure you have it inserted all the way, nice and tight so you don't strip it. And then tighten those almost as tight as you can tighten them. Once you have those three screws tight, should be no wiggle. Uh, you're ready to reverse everything we just did. So to put it back together, you have this gib that's somewhat fall down. You want to put that up. And you'll see there's these, these notches, four little notches in the holes where the gib screws hit. Put it back the same way it came out. 
kind of hold it there. And then slide it back together. So once you're there, now we're just reversing. So we're going to put these two Phillips screws back in that hold the handle to the cross slide base. Make sure you get them started straight so you don't strip anything. Tighten those pretty tight, basically as tight as you can get them without stripping off the head of the screw. Okay, once you have that, let's go ahead and uh, we can hook up our, our arm back to the cutter assembly. That's just a matter of putting that bolt with a 7 16's head right back in. then tighten that pretty tight with your 7 16 or 11 millimeter wrench. Okay, once you've got that, the last step we need to do is adjust the Gibbs tightness. So usually what we do is we'll tighten them up, these three, until we start to feel at contact, and then we go quarter to a half a round more. You can loosen or tighten those as much as you feel need for how much tension you want on that. You want to have enough tension where the cutter block assembly is not going to move during operation over 500,000 cases, but not so stiff where you physically can't turn that red handle. But if you have to lean on the side of stiff or not stiff, I would lean on the side of stiff because you're only going to adjust it just during setup and then it should stay in that position. So once you feel it's just a little bit of pressure on each one of those screws. It's not a lot. It's not like you're cranking on them. Just when you feel that pressure and that tension, go quarter round, three eighths of a round or so, half a round, whatever you feel you need. But make sure they all have about the same amount of pressure on those screws. Make sure they all kind of feel the same tightness. And then tighten up. Once you you don't really need to tighten these screws until you get your feel right. But you can see this one, it's, it's pretty stiff. Probably stiffer than I would like. So I would loosen them back up. Eighth of a round maybe. Then you can come over here and feel the tension here. That's about where I would put it. You can still move it with the indicator with your fingers. But it's not so loose where it's going to move on you during operation. Last step, we just need to snug up those four 7 millimeter hex nuts. They don't need to be super tight. It's just a a little screw just kind of snug them up. They're just jam nuts.
Now, <clears throat> if you have it where when you're set and your cutting cases or you're pretty centered up, but your indicator is not touching, you only have 50 thou of travel here. So if you look at this indicator, it's actually at the max of its travel. To fix that, take your same 7 16 wrench and you see right there that bolt that's the bolt side on this side you'll see the nut right here take your same wrench and loosen that up once you have that loose there's actually adjustment inside so you're actually moving that indicator back and forth you only got 50 thousandths of travel so you want to make sure you're somewhat in the center of that travel. Obviously, if you're cutting a 22, it's going to be moved way over here. If you're cutting a, a 375, you're going to be way over here. So you're not going to have enough travel without adjusting that. Once you get that positioned where you want, snug up that indicator. It doesn't need to be real tight. You can see here now, now we've got more range of motion. You can see when we crank the handle, it's directly active.